Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining the automation track this afternoon, or at least this talk. My name is Lars König. I'm business programmer, program manager for automation at the Qt company. So I'm responsible for all automation business. Um, as I will host you this afternoon on, on, uh, um, in this track, I will also introduce myself now <laughs> as I having the first talk about that. So uh, that's a double rule, uh, role at the moment. Um, yeah, let me start. So um, I will give you an idea or an overview of what is Qt for automation from the Qt company perspective. So at the Qt company, we started over with, with a dedicated team. We have business development, we have marketing, and we have a team working on automation-specific topics. But before I go into that, I'd like to give you an idea what we think is Qt for automation. What is automation? What is our playground? And uh, just to start with that, if you think of two dimensions being relevant for automation, you have often factory setups and you have infrastructure setups. Sometimes you produce something or you sometimes you just operate something. And that's more or less the playground from our perspective uh, for automation. So you see mining, you see uh, more recent things of farming, you see electronics being built in a factory, you see farmer being produced in a factory. But also if you operate something, the future things of smart cities or... Um, Building automation, marine warehousing is something which we is, is our um, playground for automation. And that's the area where we want to add value from the good perspective. This includes, of course, embedded devices, but all other scenarios we support as well as companion apps or <coughs> desktop applications. What are the dri driving factors for automation customers or uh, vendors here. So we have evolving con connectivity. We'll have a talk about connectivity, so many talks about that today as well. Um, we have industry standardization being kind of hot topic. Um, and uh, of course, the number of devices and the number of data you have to, to uh, uh, operate and to manage is and the number of devices is also heavily increasing in automation setups. Um, I once said that the future will be automated. So it's not the future will be written in Qt, but also the future will that will be heavily more efficient in future. Of course, there are software for that needed, and there are large infrastructures for that. And we want to address that from our, on, uh, from our point of view. So customer, customer challenges, what are the main customer challenges here? Uh, scalability. So if you don't have hundreds of sensors, if you have thousands of millions of or hundreds of thousands of sensors, that's <laughs> certainly a scalability challenge for our customers. You have to br bridge gaps between different technologies. Um, so from one island to the other, legacy, new technologies. So the interoperability challenge is there. Um, of course, software is getting more important here, and you need to have the right focus on the software bandwidth and expertise, and that's something also a challenge for our customers. At the end, I believe there's also the challenge of having um, new business models in automation as well, as well, software will be the main value driver, and the traditional, let's say, um, OT stuff, uh, the hard, so non-software related business will be changed in a certain way also to a software business. And how to answer that? So how do you re-monetize your software efforts in multiple ways, not only just equipping one device with the software? That's also a challenge for the future. So what is our mission from the automation team perspective? We want to make uh, that's the kind of uh, statement our, on our side, future uh, data handling ready. So that's, that's the, the idea we have. So we, we believe the main challenge and the main mission we have to serve our customers is data handling. Handling is at this point in time the most important one. Um, 
We also believe universal user interfaces in whatever flavor you think of, being it remote, being a desktop, being a, it, an, an embedded device, is, a kind, is very important to have uh, efficient software development. Uh, comprehensive tooling, you know that. Having the right tooling in place, not only an IDE, but also designers, having the right connection to third parties is important. And of course, at the end, the software and hardware independent scenario is important. Qt was always strong in that area, but you know, there might be even more in future we have to address. We have already started conversation on that as well. So that's our playground. And now I'd like to give you an idea what's the Qt for automation from, um, from the business point of uh, view. So that's, um, we already launched that from, or we already announced that from, from August on, we have a Qt for automation add-on offering for our customers. And just to give you, it's, it's an add-on for application development or device creation. It's a commercial add-on. And if you think from the values perspective, there, is, uh, there are certain values important for uh, automation customers already there yet from the base product, either being at application development or device creation, so like Cerebus or VNC. I like to mention that the, this here and now, just because they are not so well known, we want to emphasize that, and we see that being a value. Speak about that later on as well. But there is new stuff now. Uh, we have, with the Qt for Automation um, offering, introduced the MQTT library, uh, a KNX library, and we're also coming with industry-specific services, either coming from us or from our partners. Um, and there's, so that's not all, and there's more to come in the future, so there's already things on our roadmap we are working on. So that's the team behind that, and this will come in future. Diving a little bit deeper into that. So Qt Cerebus is, is already something available today. Uh, I don't spend so many words on that, um, but for, from what is in there, is it's a CAN bus implementation, and it's a MUD bus int int uh, uh, integration, and it's already there yet. Please have, if you're interested into Mudbus, and we know Mudbus is, it's kind of old boy, so it's already present for a while, but they are all still shipping products with Mudbus uh, interfaces. And uh, Morten from Viking uh, will talk about that and how this works with Qt applications. So if you're interested in that, um, uh, st stay here later on. <coughs> Talking about something new, it's a Qt MQT library we introduced. Um, so who, who knows MQTT of, the, of you? Just raise your hand. Oh, pretty, that, that's, that's cool. So who has worked on a, on a solution or a product on MQTT? Oh, cool. But it's not Qt MQTT probably, right? <laughs> uh, what? Ah, okay, you already had a look to into it. Yeah, okay. So we also see already customers picking that up. Um, so in the pre version. So um, MQT, uh, MQTT is really good for the future IoT scenarios as a lightweight, secure, and reliable uh, communication protocol. And uh, we implemented that on, on, uh, on protocol level 3.1 and, um, and, and 4. And it it comes with everything from the client perspective on that. And we see this as being for the future IoT, and this will also then um, have consequences for automation setups, uh, this being the right or a, uh, a technology uh, chosen by many vendors for IoT setups if it goes beyond your infrastructure, your, your uh, uh, own infrastructure. And we have also a talk on that today by, by Maurice Kalinowski from the Qt Company. Um, believe me, he's more friendly than is looking on that picture. <laughs> and uh, so there we, you, we have a deep dive on that. And we have also a demo on Qt, uh, MQTT in our booth. 
So that's a kind of really nice setup with different, uh, different applications, being Android, being on a Raspberry, uh, having that locally available, and even via a broker on the cloud. So that's nice uh, technology. Let's go to um, WebGL. WebGL streaming is something uh, coming as a tech preview in Qt 5.10. Um, so this is a technology for to support headless devices. And just to give you, and this we, uh, just to compare that to our VNC server, who knows the Qt VNC server? Oh, there's one too, cool. Um, <laughs> I thought it could, you could even be none of, <laughs> of you. Um, the VNC server is already there, and this VNC server serves also um, uh, use cases for headless devices. But we have introduced something new, which is WebGL streaming. Um, so it's exclusively streaming to, to a remote browser, which is uh, WebGL capable, and that's these nowadays more or less all. Um, it just sends GL drawing commands, and the purpose is to serve Qt nat native applications and having a low bandwidth for these Qt native applications. And it's, it's really important just because it's also lossless from, from the user experience perspective. And you have also channels backwards and so on. Um, that's, we are kind of really proud of that. Uh, we have that developed together uh, with a partner. And um, we have also Jesus um, talking about, from the good company, talking about WebGL streaming tomorrow at the latest uh, talk. So don't miss that. But we have also demos at the booth. Um, so if you're interested into the WebGL, you could even um, uh, come to our booths even before. And we have also um, a product already. So we have a Bosch device. I can say that here. So Bosch device, heavy metal Bosch device without a uh, display, but with an IMX6 uh, on that and a remote user interface on a display. That's cool technology. Um, with Qt for Automation, we have also developed the first version of the Qt uh, KNX um, library. So who of you knows, that's a, it's kind of a class today. <laughs> who, of know, who of you knows uh, KNX? Is there somebody who knows the KNX standard? Yeah, there's a, probably one company there. <laughs> um, so KNX standard is very popular for uh, building automation more on larger scale, hospitals, offices, etc., in Europe and in, in uh, China. So they are kind of present in China. And uh, we have um, we have also uh, uh, we are members of the KNX Alliance, and we have developed a library for that. So for for we we believe that is valuable more or less. Uh, no, more or less, it's valuable for for a long time. So just think, uh, you don't tear down a house after a year, right? And not the infrastructure <laughs> as well. So that this will stay for a while. And bridging gaps to to KNX uh, setups will be, of course, needed one day. This is coming with the Qt for automation. And as well on that, uh, we have a deep dive on the technical aspects by Lucy uh, from our company, Qt for automation. And we are also happy to have uh, Dries from Brücke uh, being with us today from the KNX uh, Foundation talk about KNX future towards the IT world. Let's have a look to uh, what is a part of that offering. I would like to emphasize that uh, if you go for Qt for Automation, uh, if you're interested into that, we are, uh, let's say we're shipping that with that also a certain amount of um, uh, service days, not much, um, but you get that to a decent, that's a decent offering, either by us or if it's, if it's a partner, you get in touch uh, via with uh, Qt for Automation would be also the partner. And, and we believe um, there are often cases where customers have the challenge, whatever, to first learn about that technology, getting a fast start into that. Um, that would be helpful, our team for automation, so the, the, the uh, engineers, uh, the consultants are uh, really have the expertise in that area. 
But if you also have needs, whatever, you have some, some kind of firefighting cases or so, uh, you just can call us and, and you have that uh, bought before, then you can go for that. And I see that there is a lot of, there's a kind of convenience, there's a convenience behind that. Um, there's no travel costs included, so no accommodation, so no purchasing behind that. So if that is there, you can just book that. Um, let me let me dive a little bit into what is um, what we have done already. So there is the MQTT and the KNX, and what is in our roadmap. So giving you a, um, a brief overview of what we are do going to do. This is so. These are the OPC, the DDS, and the Co-op is are the topics we are focusing on next, and it's still the topic of the future-ready data handling. So there is the Co-op. Um, Co-op. So we have uh, Adrian here today. Um, so that's that's Adrian Lerava, or what? However, I have to pronounce that. So you bear with me. Um, so Co-op is going to be as important, we believe, as MQTT if you have, uh, your, if it only plays in your infrastructure, it is even more lightweight in this case. And uh, we are partnering with, with Vitico on that level. And we also believe from the industry standardization, <coughs> there are two guys, let's say, uh, say it that way. It's on, one, one is the OPC. Um, activities and the other is the data distribution service technology. So it might be the case that not all of you know DDS, so I at least know one. <laughs> um, Rune from formerly Ulstein uh, working with us together, but DDS is a data distribution service quite uh, intensively used in the North American defense uh, industry, but also um, there are many vendors using that in, in uh, future automation scenarios. So we are looking into that topic as well, uh, as we believe that data handling is kind of that's important. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to um, something else. I have in my mind, or we have in our mind. Let's. That, that's the better statement. We have in our mind that um, the tooling in future is also. Uh, will be getting more important, and as um, it's not the V model, right? So that's <laughs> just uh, it's not a traditional V model. But we are thinking of um, streamlining the the process from uh, a visual concept via third-party tools to integrating that into Qt Quick Designer, being a, a 2D or 3D case. And using uh, then lowering the the efforts on the Q, uh, on the coding side, but um, at the end also uh, having tools in place for configuration uh, configuration of your product. So and there are two activities. The first activity is Qt Quick Designer Next Generation. So this Qt Quick Designer. So that. <laughs> So there will be a big bang on Qt Quick Designer in uh, spring that next year. So let's uh, put it that way. Um, and after that, we will have a look to uh, something on top of that, which we call that product configurator. Um, so in easily, so PLC setups may, might be an, a scenario so that you are easily able to configure your product as you want, but not to change any software underneath <coughs> of that. And, and, and that's also going into the business models, right? So if, if you have different, uh, different customers and different flavors, you want to, you want to upgrade that, et cetera. That's something we have, uh, have in mind. And actually, I believe there is from, from, from the cute company, uh, we have, we have also there an opportunity as we believe that 3D will become more important also for automation. And we will also leverage 3D capabilities into that chain as well. So if you then think of whatever you highlighting an error or something to fix in a, in, a, in a part, you can do that also with the 3D model. So that will be integrated into that as well. And um, as we are here today, we really like to um, get in touch with with customers 
or whatever, in, if, um, if you are interested into that topic at, um, at all, just because we want to understand the market um, on that much better as we already do today. And of course, for us, we are market are you. <laughs> so um, if we can get into a conversation about these topics, not only about the product configurator, but also about MQTT, about OPC, uh, um, about co-op, for instance. Uh, of course, we like to know uh, what is your purpose and what is your use case, and and how you see that. So, we are around at the at the demo, uh, at the demos, and and just just reach out to us. Don't be shy. So that was just a short introduction from from my end, and um, just giving you an idea. Um, talking again a little bit about the presentations. These are the presentations we have, have already spoken about. Uh, we, there's Viking about Modbars, there's Qt MQTT, Co-op, um, WebGL, and, and Lucy with uh, KNX. That's not, so that's not on purpose. You will see it will, uh, it builds up here. <laughs> um, there's also more to come from the all over e technology eco um, ecosystem. So we have, as I said, uh, cute, uh, um, cute okay, Nix in the IoT world. Reese from Bricker will talk about that. Actually, I believe he will also be at the booth probably later on. Um, I say it just right away, but I hope so. <laughs> um, or otherwise, just reach out to us. We will connect you. Um, there's also Massimo uh, Zantuli from Massi, it's a uh, uh, Swiss company, um, hardware, software for IoT. Um, There's also an kind of, uh, interesting uh, topic, if that is relevant for you. And tomorrow, uh, that's so the all the right things are about uh, tomorrow's talk. We have uh, uh, Sylvain from Microsoft being around talking about Microsoft IoT. Um, if it's going more towards the operating systems and, and the security for that, we have talks about uh, boot time optimization with uh, uh, Toradex. It's a joint talk of short, um, Toradex and, and our company. So Risto will take care of that. And we have also Maché from Times is uh, around tomorrow talking about security. And if you're interested into more the practical things of solutions, uh, the concrete products, there will be um, now a talk from Florian uh, Henel from uh, LG about uh, WebRS. That's more a retail uh, and consumer scenario, but also we think uh, it addresses somehow the automation. Um, we have a, a case about charge point, um, and we have Practical things from from uh, Basiscom, a partner of us, us talking about Qt Lite. If you want to downscale Qt, that's uh, that's the way of doing that. And uh, class, that's uh, uh, that's more an infrastructure setup, uh, talking about solutions in in the farming industry. So that's that's that from my end. Um, I'm. I'm in time, so more or less we have just 30 minutes, seconds for questions. <laughs> if you have any questions, raise your hand. So if, if, is there any question from, from someone, or, somebody of you? There's one question, yes? Yeah. Yeah, this is, <laughs> you, you, you hit the nail. <laughs> uh, downscaling is an, um, just recently, uh, again, a hot topic on our end. So we have industry customers, uh, not only KNX <laughs> talking about that, so uh, industry customers are also working on MCU level without any operating system. Um, sometimes it's the CPU power and the RAM are, is really decent, but without any operating system. And we we we, more, we we start up the conversation about that, and as well, if so, if you have any specific requirements, so it might be even the case that we start um, 
a working group together with, with customers or partners um, governing requirements around that. So getting an idea what would be the best um, MCUs to support, to support, what are the key requirements on, from, from the hardware perspective for how many RAM, etc. So that's something we like to work on as well. So if you're willing to share your ideas around that or your wishes, then we would be also open to do that. Other than that, many thanks, and then I will still host you. 